when we were filming our back workout, we were kind of filming like on our way to the gym and Brandon and I raw dogged pre-workout. And How do you raw dog? I mean, you take the scoop and you just throw it in your mouth without mixing it in water. And Savage. what happened was it got in my beard because everything gets in my beard. And Brandon, without even thinking twice or just not even hesitating, looks at me and just licks it off my beard. Oh! <laughs> for the shot. I got, yeah, for the shot. No yeah. beer. Sometimes you just gotta take one for the team. I don't know about you, but I said blow as close to high do. Getting ready to roll up on the hop up in the mix. Make it happen. Forget about the odds. I'm gonna take the action. Like a man or a director's car or a film of Van Damme and Steven Seagal. Let's do the deed. Even if we're out of our league, worst case. Here we are again with me making breakfast in the morning. That's kind of how I start every day. Got the family off to preschool. And now Howard's on his way over. We've got our weekly meeting where we're going to be talking about conversions uh, and basically all the optimization that we do on the website. Last time we talked about the importance of one, having a website, two, being uh, on Facebook, and three, having a product to sell so you can make money in your sleep. And what we're doing today is I have my conversion optimization specialist, uh, Bryce. He has been working closely with our Facebook rep, uh, closely with our retargeting rep so basically when you when you go to body spartan and you land on our site it plants a cookie on your machine and when you go somewhere else other sites that sell ad space you will see our uh, our ads reminding you about us so it's kind of the equivalent of uh, what a billboard did in the 80s and early 90s where the way to get advertisement out was to put your name on a billboard or get your name in the newspaper or your brand in the newspaper and magazines. And right now that doesn't really convert. What does convert is retargeting. So when it plants a cookie, you go somewhere else that, you know, thousands of sites and places sell ad space and the right retargeting company will help you put your, uh, your ad back on there. And what we do is we very highly and very specifically target those ads. We will, let's say somebody lands on a Genesis page. So they're looking to get lean and shredded. They're looking to, lose weight, gain muscle mass, uh, and get the full nutrition plan. Everything that Genesis has to offer, they look at it, they decide not to buy. They leave. You've got a cookie on your machine now. So when they go to a different site, guess what? They're going to see a Genesis ad. And they're going to see a picture of me or Cage or Howard or somebody that has something to do with Body Spartan Genesis. And more than likely, uh, we get a great click-through rate on that. We get a great ROI. There is a a pretty large conversion window. It ranges up to 28 days where it will take somebody to convert. And after 28 days, we pretty much go, okay, they're not going to convert. Let's try to get them back into our funnel another way. And guys, think about this too. When I'm saying getting them back into our funnel, uh, I don't want you to think like this is greedy, money hungry stuff. This is literally how a business operates. And we're always trying to spread our message. And if you remember why you started your company, why you're doing what you're doing, this will be a no brainer. Um, the idea is to spread your message. Never forget why you started. Never forget why you're doing this. And the reason I'm doing this is to change lives. And of course, some of you are going to go, oh, well, you just have to make money. I'm like, Well, yeah, money's a, a byproduct of what we do. But if you're aggressive about it, you're going to reap the rewards of what you did. If you have a good product, and I think we have a phenomenal product, like I said before, there's no shame in doing something good and being rewarded for what you do. The important thing for you guys to remember too is you can't be afraid to spend money. You can't be afraid to look at, look at it this way. When I started my business, when I started Body Spartan, you know, we were selling the Genesis program as an ebook and it was $9.99 or $19.99. I think I tinkered with a couple of prices and it was literally a word to PDF document. When I would sell one or two, which would be you know, a couple times a month, and ultimately it worked out to be a couple times a week, I wouldn't take any of that money for myself. I would instead put the money back into the business. And I treated it kind of like monopoly money. And I said, okay, I have, I'm surviving off what I was doing on the other side of the business, which was digital marketing. I'm making enough money to cover my bills and that's it, I'm scratching by. I took everything I made and I reinvested into the company. So if I sold a book for 1999, Rather than spending that money, I would put it all back into the business. I would put it towards a Facebook post boost. And that was the time I got to play with my Facebook demographic and start figuring out who responded to what. I never took money out of Body Spartan 
It was always back in, back in, and I wasn't afraid to spend. And it was like, basically, <laughs> I, I saw this, uh, this Instagram post about eight months ago. It was hilarious. It's one of those like motivator posts, and it said, before every major decision, here's what I say. Oh, well, fuck it. And that's pretty much how I run my business. It's like, it's funny money. It's monopoly money at this point. It's extra on top of what I didn't have. I'm like, oh, well, fuck it. What do I got to lose? Nothing. Because if I lose, I'm back where I started just barely paying my bills. So you have to be okay with taking chances. If you don't take chances, you're never going to get these rewards. You're never going to take the risk. And with great risk comes great reward. Don't be afraid to spend money on your company. Don't be afraid, like, as you start generating income from whatever product it is that you guys decide you're going to go out there and sell, put it back into the business. You have to advertise. You have to get your message out there. You have to be able to reach your audience. And the way to do that is through advertising. And of course, if you have, you know, some sort of viral video or something that you get because you're awesome at, you know, doing razor skateboarding or whatever the scooters, are they called scooters what the kids are doing? <laughs> Just dated myself. Uh, you know, that helps because now you got a subscriber base and you can obviously redirect your traffic. Uh, YouTube is something that we're still working on. We decided to put all of our efforts into Facebook because that was the direct money generator. And we haven't specifically built up our, uh, our YouTube the way it should be. Uh, so we're working on that now. But what I'm getting at is that if you have an organic subscriber base that is watching your stuff and, and dedicated to... Um, you know, your channel and you've got tons of subscribers, well, that's a great way to get your message out there. And eventually, you're gonna push them back to your website where they can actually purchase your product. And by the way, guys, no conversions happen on social media. It just doesn't happen that way. Social is a driver of traffic to your website. So you build up your, your subscriber base, you get your followers, you get your fans, they see your message, and when they're ready to buy, they don't buy on Facebook, they don't buy on Instagram, they don't buy stuff from you on YouTube. You use that to get them back to your website so that they can buy your product there. That's where your hub is. That's your main funnel for everything. So that's why it's so important with this meeting this morning that we, we go, we talked about conversion optimization. So is everything on the website happening the way it should? We're off to Zentive Agency uh, to meet with Brian Fikes, my partner uh, in Body Spartan. He's my CMO, which is Chief Marketing Officer. And Bryce Young, who is my conversion optimization specialist. Are meeting at Zentive, which is Brian's company. They've worked with like major, major corporations. Uh, one of the biggest, not biggest, but one of their clients you guys will probably know is Guy Fieri. Fieri, I guess is how you say it. Um, so they've worked with him since the beginning. What's up, brother? Good morning. Good. Good. How are you? Bryce, run a little late, I think. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's uh, we'll set up laptops. I'm going to do it here. Okay. Dude, there was like four comments yesterday after because me and B worked out, and people are like, "It's really good to see you guys like working out." I'm like, Wait, "Did you really think that we hated Brandon?" <laughs> <laughs> There's people that think it's legit, dude. They legitimately think that we hate Brandon. Like, well, because so uh, have you seen our Snapchat at all lately? No. So for about what's well, been like three weeks, <laughs> Brandon. Three weeks. Remember? Okay, here's the way this went down. One day, Brandon goes, "Hey, what time are you guys working out?" We're like, "Well." We want to work out at this time. He's like, well, I can't. I don't get off till this time. Let's work out at four. We're like, okay, cool. We'll work out at four. We'll do legs. He just no-shows us. And we're like, where are you, bro? He's like, oh, I'm, I'm a powerhouse working out with his girlfriend. We're doing legs. I'm like, he's like, we're half hour in. I'm like, what the hell, man? So we basically snapped. And we're like, hey, Brandon, fuck you, Brandon. And then it became like through the whole day, we're just like, fuck you, Brandon, fuck you, Brandon. And then it, like, the next day, the next day, and people started responding. Like, we are getting people on a daily basis. Like, this one guy, like, spelled out in, like, Sharpie on a Pete's table, like, <laughs> like, the weight stack? The weight stack. Somebody, like, someone put little stickers on a weight stack? On a weight stack. <laughs> <laughs> it's this huge, crazy thing right Because then we did, because we're like, oh, dude, like, a lot of people are doing this. Let's see what we can, like, let's see if we have some fun with this. And so we did, like, a little contest where, like, all right, everyone create your best FU brand and, like, meme. Oh, and, yeah. And send you it to those. us. <laughs> and I, I, I have a look at here. I saved. Let's see. Did you pick some legs? Did you? Yeah, we picked two. Yeah. We couldn't decide. We picked, so we picked two, two. And it was funny, dude, because I didn't, I didn't know it's not actually one ended up being that Kevin Minlo guy. Oh no way! <laughs> That's <laughs> too funny. Manella, Kevin Manella. Oh, there we go. He's the one that puked in the garbage can from the leg day. <clears throat> nice. Did he, get, get, did he get back to it? Dude. So yeah, end of the workout. They flew out from Pennsylvania to work out with us, and they're you know they're not bodybuilders by any means. They just want us to put them through the ringer. Yeah. We put them through a pre-exhaust leg workout. So we did everything before the compound movements, leg extensions, two different types of hamstring curls. I think we did lunges. And then we went to leg press. And we did sets of like 
40 with drop sets. And on the fifth set, he just goes over and just bleh. I've never seen so many blow chunks like that hard in a garbage can. And I'm like, are you done? He's like, okay, I got one more set left. And he finished his set. <laughs> he went back and he did another 20, 30 reps or something. I'm like, okay. So talk about creative social media. We have this, this I'm going to use quiet voice in here, this FU Brandon thing going on on Snap. So we asked them to send their favorite memes. And we have like people spelling things out in barbecue sauce on Chipotle tables, you know. <laughs> I mean, we must have got... 200 of these things in an hour, people just flooding us. So it lets you know that you're doing something right. And this all happened by accident. So be creative with your social media. Okay. Could be so the day of the week. One thing I would love to see if we could correlate is like the, the number um, of Snap posts, Instagram posts, or like a Facebook post by to day, revenue. and then see if we can map that to revenue. They have no idea what's going on, so we're waiting for them to fix it. Okay, cool. So spend more on Facebook in the meantime. One of the things that I wanted to talk about that I thought I talked about last time, but I didn't, uh, I mentioned at the end of the video, was opportunity cost. And opportunity cost is basically the amount of time and effort it takes to put into a certain facet of the business. So, for example, we were looking at doing apparel. And, uh, you know, the guys have spent a bunch of time doing new apparel designs. What you guys do? You outlined like... Sweatshirts, well, sweatshirts tops, yoga shirts. pants, yeah. um, <laughs> We looked at who was trending the most popular and then what types of material to use and like what would be most cost effective, what types Product. of labels would be. Label placement. Hours, yeah. basically. Yeah. We've right. got tons of hours invested in, not tons, but there's a good chunk. I mean, you guys spent, sure. it was a project for sure. And one of the things that, you know, I learned over the last couple of weeks, we're working with one of the guys who's helping us with some investment stuff. He's getting us prepped to basically go look for some funding was opportunity cost. And basically it goes, what is it that you guys do? Do you do digital downloads? <clears throat> Are you an apparel company? Do you sell supplements? Do you do seminars? Like, what is it that you do the most of? And what is the opportunity cost of chasing those other things? And what we determine is that the margin on apparel is much smaller than the margin on digital products. So obviously, you know, there's no overhead for digital products. Apparel right now is not our big seller. One, because we don't push it as hard as other things. But two, because our main focus is on digital downloads. So the Genesis program, Unleashed, Elite, all that stuff. What's the cost to us, whether it's time, money, whatever, to actually go chase apparel? And that's what this opportunity cost thing is about. It's how many man hours does it take for you guys to go do this, to get it started? Can, I, can we better spend that time and money somewhere else? And of course, the answer that I came up with was, yeah, we can put it back into our programs. We can advertise more, we can do more social media about our programs, we can make people aware about all of our digital stuff rather right. than spending the time and the effort on trying to build an apparel portion of the company. Although it's a good revenue stream, my, um, what do I want to call him? Um, we'll call him my mentor right now. <laughs> uh, he basically said, pour your efforts into what is working and working really well and then once you have that to just massive yeah, level, then let's break off and do other departments. But let's focus on the things that make you the most return right now. And so for anybody that's starting a business, sometimes it's easy to spread yourself way too thin. So you want to do this, you want to do that, you want to be all things to all people. Don't. Like pick one and be that thing. And so we're not an apparel company. We have apparel for branding, but you have to think about it like, uh, I think I told you guys a story where... It was you. You mentioned somebody in New York who was like wearing one of our hoodies, right? Right. Yeah. So how'd that go? What was that story? It was great. Uh, I, when I traveled to, when I traveled to the East Coast, I was visiting family, and it was I was going to go work out with a friend. She's also uh, another apparel rep for an actual really popular company, and <clears throat> show up, and she was actually wearing one of our one of our hoodies, and it was it was amazing. I was like, where'd you get that? She's like, she's like, I've known about your company for a while. She's like, I wanted to buy it. She's like, thought it'd be kind of cool to show up with this and show them, you know, full support of you guys. And it was just, it's awesome. So it's, it's really cool to see you have that reach. And, you know, it, it kind of reminded me that, oh yeah, we do sell apparel. Like we do have, you know, things that people want to buy that are not just like, um, you know, programs in the sense or, and so. But that was all the way, that was New York, yeah, right? New, New York City. City. Yeah. So uh, New York. Complete opposite end of the continent. Yeah. So, and then the, the mentor that I'm working with said, because I told him that story, he said, now that's awesome. I mean, so you have to ask yourself this question. And he goes, this is what I would ask myself. He said, from an owner's standpoint and an entrepreneurial standpoint, well, that's cool that he's wearing our stuff, but the question is, did he, did he buy a program? Or did she buy a program? I'm right. sorry, it was a girl, right? Did she buy a program? I don't know. Yeah. Did she buy anything else? I don't know. 
So did it convert into something else, into the long-term right. customer? That There's no way to, to measure that. So that's where we start measuring opportunity costs. And he goes, it's unmeasurable. Why don't you put your time and effort into something that's measurable? I'm like, okay, cool. Now, now I get it. And the other thing that goes along with that too is he said, you as an owner and an entrepreneur, you have to ask yourself, how did that make you feel? Because instantly I'm like, that oh, made me feel good. Made you feel good, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was like, cool, our stuff's being worn in New York. That's fucking badass. But then it's like, was that an ego thing? Or was that a good for the business thing? It's like that, it's like that uh, short-term gain and not necessarily long-term loss, but it's not gonna be as profitable for us as like you're saying, pouring our endeavors into programs. Like yep. it's, that, it's that quick feel good, it's that yeah. quick high, and that's, everyone, everyone likes that. It's like, it's a quick ego trip and it's not a bad thing. Like, it's, it's like seeing your name on a billboard. You're like, exactly. oh, that's me. Yeah, yeah, but what is that gonna do? What is that gonna do for us? Nothing. Exactly. Well, not that it's not gonna do nothing, but it's we can't measure it. It's at the same time. But we can't measure it. But it's like, do we, can we measure branding? No. Can we measure digital download conversions? Absolutely. So that's that's what he's getting at is, you know, ask yourself if it's, it's, if it's a decision for ego, which is sometimes there's a place for that, but is it a decision that's best for the revenue of the company? And measure the opportunity cost. The cost that I want to expend. Maybe it is. Like we can't, for every person it's gonna be different. It's just a decision that you have to make. And that's what he told me. He's like, I'm not gonna tell you how to run your company, just a decision that you have to make. And just always ask yourself that question. And it was at the Tony Robbins Business Mastery Seminar, it was, uh, Smart people look for answers. Geniuses ask questions. Right. And so that is really paramount to what we're talking about. Ask yourself that question is what. You guys see this cup? This is. It's on the other side too. Oh, it's on both sides? Yeah. I don't know if you. It's a, it's a, double, it's a double shot of yeah. Brandon's awesome cup. Uh, my favorite cup. <laughs> uh, is Again, I think what we are realizing in, as a growing company as well is that we're focusing more on, like you said, like the, the, the revenue builders and, and what do we what do we want to specialize in? And the programs are something that, you know, we've always been behind and actually what started, Body Spartan started with the Genesis. Yeah. So it's always been kind of like the anchor and the starting point. And what happens is like when you do start to see like uh, profitability and a lot of things, you can easily get overwhelmed with like, I guess lack of a better term, dollar signs. You see, oh my God, success, 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 success. And so, you know, the fitness world being so vast and so many different things, apparel, supplements, and everything, it's like, oh my God, well, let's do it all. But realistically, you got to remember why you started. What was your fundamental? What was your staple to the company? And whatnot? Well, that goes back to your first program. Remember when I first met you? You had just released an ebook. Which was Genesis. Which yes. Yeah, yeah. And we, I talked about that earlier today before anybody, like when Sean got to the house, I kind of talked about how it started as an ebook. Yep. Right. That was the first thing I asked about when I met you. I was like, well, what do you do? And you're like, well, you know, I'm, I'm this guy. I had no idea who you were. I had yeah. no idea. I, I, was no, I never grew up with WWE or anything like that. Like to me, you were just, you were just game I'm tough. Just a guy with the yeah, you're a big ass dude who I was like, all right, well, he can curl more than me. So obviously, I want to train with this guy. So, <laughs> uh, but no, then we talked about like you, you had just released this program and it, it got me thinking. I was like, well, I want to learn from this guy. And so that's what draws people in. It's not necessarily, and then I was like, and then I saw your shirt and your and your, your apparel brand. I was like, okay, yeah, let me, let me. Got a little, he's got some legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, it was, it was good. It's funny, it started with like five shirts. We're talking about not doing apparel, but the whole thing started with a book and five shirts. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think the big point here too, is that a lot of people sit here and they think and they dream and they, oh, we should do this and that. And they take so much time planning that they don't actually take action. And me, I just literally got behind Microsoft Word and I just started typing. It was after my brother died. And uh, for those of you that don't know, go go watch the story about my why. Uh, if you just Google Gabe's why, you'll see it. And my brother committed suicide. And after that, I was really driven to work. So I just sat down every night and I literally had a laptop and I just wrote and I wrote and I wrote and I wrote and I wrote. And that's all I did. I turned off the TV and I wrote. And when I had a product that I thought was decent, I formatted it in a PDF and I put it out there. I'm like, it can be better, but this is the best I can do with the software I have. I'd like to do all these other things, but I'm gonna put it out here right now see how it does and that's what we started with and most people will just sit there and go no I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it because I gotta do this and that and this and that and this I gotta do this video and that video it's like just fucking get something out there yep. which is how we started we just got stuff out there yep. same with the hoodies like when we decided to do that and we literally decided we would do a pre-order I mean you guys were at my house packing and folding hoodies <laughs> like no, my living room scary. floor was covered in Manila envelopes, like from, from one side to the other. And like we would get these boxes of hoodies and it would be late at night or in the afternoon, be running around, running errands for him, like dropping off things, like mailing things for him. And then we'd have to like 
the hoodies wouldn't even be packaged. We'd have to literally sit there, look up the name of the person, look where it was going, print the labels out ourselves, actually pack, fold up the hoodies, put them in the plastic packaging, put them in another envelope, we did match the labels, notes. yeah, and we would handwrite notes to every single person because it meant that much to us because they were they were the the, the building they blocks step. of what we're able to do now. And it's and like I know it sounds cheesy, but like <clears throat> every every time we do our live videos, I always make sure to say like without you guys, Body Spartan would not exist because we could have a product or we could have a dream, but without the people actually to believe in it and follow us and 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 journey with us, it wouldn't be anything. A lot of times with a company or business, things will just not go the way that you want them to. And, if, oh, and oh, most people, oh, yep. yeah, most people just give up. 90% yep. of the people, I think, would just give up because it's too hard and it's difficult. And so yep. right now, a perfect example is we're trying to get ClickBank off the ground and running. And so ClickBank is an affiliate site where we get our products up there. Other people come and they sell it for a commission. So it's an opportunity for us to spread our message out to areas that we wouldn't have before. So we'd reach new people. They'd see our message. They'd buy our products. They'd learn who we are. And they, you know, we further changing lives. Yes, we're making money for the company, but again, we're always thinking about why we started this. And again, there's a point in time, like I said last time, where you have to realize as an owner, you have to make money for the company and you have to grow. If you want your message to spread, you have to grow and there, there's gonna be money, so you have to think business-minded and that's what this series is about. That being said, I had written uh, an ebook with this new platform in mind. It was the Big Arm Bible. Wrote it specifically because we want to do this endeavor. We needed an ebook. We had just finished the workout with CT Fletcher, and I was like, dude, this is perfect. We can write uh, an ebook about that, tell our story, how we did it, did all our arm workouts. We all gained at least an inch on our arms. It was stupid <laughs> in less than a month. So I wrote an ebook about that. All, all, I know, it was super painful. <laughs> I'm still growing. All, uh, all the nutrition that we did, <laughs> we, like I put everything in the ebook and I wrote it. And we're ready to get it on this platform, and I'm partnering with a couple of the guys there. And I was told today that the demographic for this ebook doesn't match the demographic of the partners. They're looking for something in, you know, 40 and above. And I instantly was like, man, I wish somebody had told me that before I, you know, invested, you know, what did it take you? Two, two weeks, pretty much two every day writing. Because yeah. I did the thing myself, uh, you know, every day. And it doesn't seem like a lot of work, guys, but when you're behind the computer for 10 hours a day, it, you know, it adds up. And that's well, that's also hard. balancing every single other piece that's that we have to do. Yeah, yeah like, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you what, for writing the ebook as quick as I did, it's pretty damn amazing. It usually takes people months. And uh, Sean can wait. <laughs> Sean, we love you, but we're in the middle of filming. Yeah, I was um, dedicated. And this is what I talk about, just getting something done. I literally sat behind the computer for about two weeks, and I just wrote, and I wrote, and I wrote, and I wrote, and I designed, and I designed, and I thought about it, and I got every picture organized, and I just did it, and I just busted it out. You guys are like, oh, you did it in two weeks? It can't be worth that much. I'm like, yeah, that's, you know, do the math, you know, eight, ten hours a day times seven, so it's, you know, figure 40 hours each week for two weeks, 80 hours of work into one ebook, And it went fast because I knew what I was doing. It wasn't my first one. The point is, get something out there guys and then back to clickbank talking about that and not knowing the endeavor i'm like that's that's 80 hours of my time on this and when most business owners look at that they're just like shit like fuck it. why would i even want to use this because we haven't actually set up the platform we haven't finished creating the landing pages and i just go is this going to work and that's the question that gets in everybody's head it's like is it going to work yeah. and i think that's the difference in what we do is i think our mentality because we work so hard in the gym is like we're never quitting. Fully agree. So all that to say, things are going to be hard in your entrepreneurial venture. Don't give up when you hit a speed bump. Don't give up when it gets hard. You got to push through it. And if you want to grow, you have to get outside your comfort zone. And then when it seems like, oh, I'm just, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go back to doing what I usually do. That's when you fuck up. That's when it's like red flag. I'm going to go do something totally new, different, hard, difficult, because it's going to challenge me and then you're going to grow. Okay. Let's talk about work ethic. Howard. Yeah. How do you spend your Friday nights? How do I spend my Friday nights? I spend my Friday nights in the gym. Or, or at my computer, which is my office. Doing work for um, Body Spartan. Why? Because this is my company. And if we don't do that, what happens? I don't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> well, that. <laughs> so one of those well, let's, is, let's ask yourself why won't you have a job? I is <laughs> pretty relentless right now. Because if I don't do it, then our company fails. And if our company fails, not only do we not have a job because this is what's putting food on our table, but even worse, internally, I feel like I've let a lot of people down because there's a lot of people out there that look up to Brandon, what we do. What do you do on Saturday? Honestly, I'm either working out or I'm working on my own personal goals or I'm asking you what I can do to help the company or basically just doing things that can either further my own personal development or further the development of Body Spartan. So, so basically what we're saying is that none of us go out and party on Friday, Saturday nights. 
and all of our spare time is spent working on a dream that the three of us have. And people, that kind of segues into another topic, is that people live for the weekend, so to speak. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you have to stop doing that. You have to actually start embracing it as what you do on a day-to-day -day basis so you don't feel like you are just surviving through the week to be able to party on the weekend. If that's something that's going on, you have to reevaluate your goals. You have to reevaluate what, uh, what you are doing with your life. Um, that's not to say that you are having a messed up life or anything, but it, you shouldn't be looking so forward to the weekend to get away from it is that what you're doing as, as your job or your career or your passion or whatever that you feel like you have to go crazy on the weekend that 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 means you to start to look an internal and figure out what else is going on it's a big red flag that says i'm stuck in a routine yep. and i'm doing it every damn week and i can't wait for the weekend and that's how your life slips by you're like oh i work five days a week six days a week yep. you know 70 hours a week my life slips by. What, so, what we did is we created the opportunity so that we don't have to look forward to the weekends. Yeah. We can take off any day of the week we want because you know well, we can't. Because we work weekends. Creating because habit. How many weekends have we worked? Yeah, well, a million. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so many. I mean, and that's creating habit. Like you're creating that habit of going out and partying every weekend. Well, we created the habit of actually being productive and actually furthering ourselves, furthering our goals every weekend. So. I Just mean, what, 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 yeah, stuff on work, weekends, yeah, and a work ethic is not a work ethic is not you're not born with one. It's, it's created. You have to actually work for it and you actually have to create that habit yourself. So like, what is it like 20 days and a habit is made something 20, like that? I think 20 or 21. Something like yeah, that. something like that. So personal challenge you could do for yourself if you're not doing it already for 20 days instead of going for a drink or going out and hanging out with your friends more than you usually would or, or whatever it is. Try 20 days of doing one more productive thing that you wouldn't normally do per day. Create that habit, and that'll create that work ethic. Great, great challenge, man. So just to re recap what we're talking about here today, opportunity costs, what are the hours, man hours, time involved in pursuing a certain facet of your company, a venture? Is that where you want to put your time and your efforts? Or would they be better spent somewhere else that will drive more ROI? Speed bumps, when, it, when shit gets hard, don't quit, you gotta push through it. Everybody likes to give up easy, don't. It's the ones that don't give up and persevere that are successful. And the last thing that we talked about. Work, uh, work ethic. Work ethic. Have a relentless and sickening work ethic. Priscilla always says about us, my wife, she says, you have sickening work ethic. And she looks up to that and she, well, she has sickening work ethic, ethic herself. But be that person where it's like, how do you do that? because you have a goal and you don't want to be 60 and look back and go, shit, I wasted my life. I could have done this and I could be enjoying my life. Engineer your life so that you don't have to look forward to the weekend and you can look forward to the weekdays. And people, are, people always ask us, and we're closing, but they're like, don't you guys have real jobs? I'm like, yeah, we engineered these jobs. We made this happen because we used every hour of our spare time and poured it into Body Spartan so that we could have this life. And by, any, by all means, don't think that we don't work. Because like I was talking about, I did 40 hours in two, yeah, two and a half days, right. and I went, I went nuts. And he's, and he's pulling, you know, he's pulling you know, 10, 12, 16 hour days, and then and I have, doing fire I'm, doing, you know, I'm doing firefighting plus this, and it's just like, we work our asses off, and we still don't feel like we're, we're struggling in the sense of like, this is something we don't enjoy. No, you know yeah. I mean? like, and we, still, we make the right sacrifices. Yeah, Literally, I'm consciously thinking about our company on a regular basis. I'll be with my girlfriend, I'll be with family, relatives, and I'll be on my phone, and instead of like, you know, that normal, oh, like, you're just on your phone not doing anything? No, I'm working, I'm constantly always checking updates. Like, it's always going through my mind no matter what I'm doing, it's just second nature. And honestly, that might sound a little obsessive, but that's the kind of work ethic you need to have, and what we're talking about, this sickening work ethic. like. Literally, even on the days that I take off for myself, I'm still like checking social media. Even though I'm not supposed to, I said I'm not going to do it. It's just because it constantly runs through my head. <laughs> you like, like me. That's all I think. Of. Like I'm not supposed to be doing it. You guys are supposed to. And I still like every every time I go so sit down. And, like this is so funny. This is like you want you want to hear great content. Every time I go to the bathroom to go take a shit, I bring my phone with me and I just sit there and answer comments. <laughs> like, even though I shouldn't be doing it, oh, no, that's, that's what I do. Messages on Facebook, that's Instagram, how, but like, Snapchat. I want to know what's going on. Like, yeah. I want to like, okay, how can I best spend my time? Well, I'm gonna answer a couple comments while I'm here. <laughs> or, or whenever we're in the gym, Is that why it takes you 15 yeah. minutes? Yeah. <laughs> whenever we're in the gym or we go somewhere, constantly thinking of a creative idea, like this would be a really cool shot. That would be something cool. Oh yeah. This, I'm doing something like, that would be really cool to write up a, a, a blog about, an article about, like something, how can we tie this in with fitness? Again, it's something I'm passionate about, so it's like constantly going through my head. Like I'm always thinking about, like, how can I tie that in with fitness? How can I tie that in with Body Spartan? How can we make this more predominant?
So, long story short, title and sickening work ethic. Yeah, sickening. And don't settle. Never settle. Let's get back to the office. Yeah, all right.